Toasters, at least three times a week, I run across stories of men who are saying they're frustrated. They're frustrated with their lover, their spouse, their wife, their girlfriend, and they're complaining about not being poured into. This woman isn't pouring into them. She's not supporting them. She's not respecting them, and they're fed up. They're about to throw in the towel. Actually, some guys have thrown in the towel. And I've run into guys who I counsel, who I mentor, who have the same complaint. They're tired. They need to be poured into. They need to be supported. But how do we link up with these types of women, man? How do we link up with the woman that is not pouring into us? Well, fellas, it's our fault. It starts with us. You have to fix what's internal before you can attract what's external. I'm going to show you just how and why it's our fault, and I'm going to give you some solutions. Let's get to it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Now, for the young fellas out there, before you start to seriously court a woman, I'm talking about to the point where you're thinking about living together, uh, creating lives together, uh, getting married. Before you do any of that, you need to spend time alone with just you. And I mean some intimate time to really get to know who you are, what your principles are, what your beliefs are, what you stand on, what you go for, what you will not go for, uh, your strengths and your weaknesses. You really need to do that. That's important. That's imperative that you do that because that's going to let you know who you are. It's going to allow you to get to really know who you are, who you're not. And you're going to learn your weaknesses. You're going to learn your strengths. And you're going to start attracting what you actually need. You're going to start attracting what pours into you and not just what takes away from you. You're going to attract someone who you can pour into and who can pour into you. What the problem is with us, fellas, we get into these relationships and there's two things going on. We expect something from someone who can't give us what we need. But the number one problem is, like I said, we don't know who we are. We're rushing into these relationships under false pretense. We're sending mixed signals. We're sending a, we're giving this woman a, a, a facade or a fake impression of who we truly are. And that's because we don't know who we are. To get past that, to jump that hurdle, brothers, you got to dig deep. You got to go to the subconscious. Yes, the things you do involuntarily, you got to go there. The things you don't think about, yes. You know, neuroscientists say 95% of what we do comes from the subconscious. These are things we don't think about, just things we do involuntarily, right? And so that's where 95% of our actions come from. But how do they get there? Man, it starts from a child. It starts from a child, things we see, things we're told, things we hear. And then we repeat those things to ourselves. You know, as we get older, we tell ourselves certain things. We see certain things, right? We hear certain things. And that reinforces certain things within our subconscious. But the thing is, man, you can put on a face, a false face for so long because whatever is impressed into your subconscious will be expressed uh, within a conscious mind. It will be exposed. You'll show it. You know, you can only suppress so much within your subconscious before it comes out, the true you. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, we are consciously uh, showing a fake face to these to these women and, and giving them a certain impression. And then we get tired of it. You know, the gig is up and we're frustrated that she can't pour into us what we need. Other times we subconsciously do it. You know, we don't even know we're doing it. We hadn't really spent time alone to ourselves to get to know ourselves. And so we're subconsciously drawn to a certain type of woman or drawn a certain type of woman to us. And we really don't know why and what we end up breaking up. We end up divorcing. We still don't take the time to really get to know who we are. And so we get with the same type of woman and we get the same result. Brothers, very, very important to get to know who you are. Right. And so a woman, to an extent, will mirror you. 
she'll go off of your vibe. So that's why you have to set the tone. Now, a woman will, you know, test you. Uh, sometimes, you know, just subconsciously, she will test you. She'll see if you're really about what you say you're about, you know, and that keeps you sharp. But a woman, a woman will uh, mold to a mirror to what you are and to the standard you set, right? And so that's very important that you know who you are, that you can stand on your own too, stand on your principles and not waver. You will draw the type of woman you want and she will pour into you. Now, every woman is not able to pour into you and you're not able to pour into every woman. That's just facts, man. And so we can't just uh, select and choose and bring any type of woman into our lives. It doesn't work that way. Another mistake people make or men make is we listen to these guys or we, we create this thing in our head where we think it's macho, we think it's alpha, we think it's manly to not have a requirement of the woman, uh, for the woman to not have to have an assignment, not to bring something into our lives. No, a woman must pour something into your life. Now, you can, you know, live by this, this belief that you should give, 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 and there should be no requirement of the woman. You can try to do that, but you're going to crash and burn eventually because what you're trying to do, you're trying to go against the law of the universe. Man, the law of the universe says, one of the laws says, you must receive and you must give. Period, man. That's, that's, that's a law. You must receive and give. So if one person is receiving and not giving, they're going to get frustrated over time too. They're going to get bored. They're going to feel uh, not challenged. They're going to not know what their value is, what their worth is, what their mission is in this life because they're not able to give anything, right? And so the person that's constantly giving and not receiving, they're going to get burnt out too because they're going to be exerted, man. They're going to be flushed, empty, and nothing's replenished. So, this is a law, man. You must give and receive. So yes, a woman must have an assignment. She must have a requirement. She must be able to pour it into you. Again, not every woman can do that for you, man. But once you know who you are, what you're not, you'll know and you'll attract the type of woman you should have. Now, another thing is, man, some of this stuff is in our subconscious due to our parenting. Our parents put a lot into our subconscious, man. Uh, myself, when, when I first, well, we'll take it back. When I was young, my single mother would say that, uh, I think I've told this before. She would say in passing or just in conversation that she always wanted to be a housewife. That's all she wanted to do, uh, be a housewife. Uh, she didn't want to work. Now, she did not directly or literally tell me that my wife shouldn't work, but this stuff is being planted in my head. She's consciously telling me this, right? And then it's going into my subconscious. Now, at the time this is being planted, I'm not even old enough to get married. But when I do get married, right, to my un unbeknownst to me, I'm pulling from my subconscious things that are there. And my thing is, right, I'm pulling what's been impressed upon me is now been expressed in the forefront and I'm telling myself my wife shouldn't have to work once we have our kids she shouldn't work who whose belief is that is that my belief is that my mom's belief that's been impressed upon me now I have no problem with people who don't want their woman to work but it takes a certain kind of woman that shouldn't work every woman is not built to be a housewife you know because to be a legitimate housewife is a real job is a is a really tough job to be a real housewife uh she usually gets up before the man gets up to prepare a meal you know, all right to make sure he's ready to go right uh if you have kids she has to take take care of the kids she has to run errands she has to have a house or a meal prepared when he gets home also and then you got this you know the sexual relations you know, you got other things within the marriage going on. So it's a real job if you're going to be a real housewife. Every woman's not cut for that. 
So I was in a relationship, in a marriage at the time, with a woman who was not cut for that. That's not saying she's a bad person, but she wasn't cut for that, right? And I'm putting her in a position she's not cut for because of something that's in my subconscious. Disaster, brothers. And that happens to a lot of us. It may not have anything to do with being a housewife, but other things have been oppressed, impressed upon your subconscious. And then you express it later on in life, and you don't know where it came from or why you're doing it, and you're miserable, you're disappointed, and, and you know, you end up breaking up or divorcing. And then you do the whole routine again, right? Brothers, you have to reprogram your mind. You have to. You have to clean out everything that's in your subconscious, reprogram it, put the things, learn you, and then you start programming your master program, your subconscious with the things you actually want. And then you start acting on those things. Repeti uh, repetition, right? Repetition brings uh, a programming. So the more you do something, it'll program your mind, it'll program your subconscious. You'll start attracting those things. Right. So that's the first thing, man. Reprogram your mind and you'll get to where you want to be. You'll draw who you want to draw. Now, you got to be honest with yourself. When you come in contact with certain women, you got to say, man, can she really pour into me? Right. You got to ask yourself, man, you got to be honest. Even if you're digging her, you're feeling her. You got to be honest. Can she pour into me what I need? Right. And if she's digging you, you can't ask her. Can she pour into you? She's going to say, yeah. She's going to say, yeah, I can pour into you what you need. You know, because she wants to be with you. And, you know, she probably hasn't even taken the time to get to know herself. So she's going to tell you what she emotionally feels. So you can't go on that, man. You got to have some hard conversations with yourself. To, to get what you want and draw who you want, man, or you're going to end up miserable. Now, I met with a gentleman this past weekend, man. Uh, he reached out to me about a week ago, and he told me that he had a lot on his mind, a lot on his heart, and he wanted my take on it. He wanted to meet up. Now, I've known this brother, or we've known of each other for, man, probably 25 years, man. We went to school together, but we never hung out. I wouldn't say we were friends. You know, but we knew of each other. Uh, so we met. We met up. And I told him, you know, I'll I'm, meet I'm you halfway. He's in Turo. Uh, I'm in Dallas. So I said, I'll meet you in Mesquite. For you who know about the DFW area, I said, I'll meet you halfway in Mesquite. We had a beautiful lunch, man. Beautiful conversation. And, you know, he began telling me, as I suspected, uh, things that were going wrong in his marriage uh, with his wife, how he was frustrated, how she didn't respect him, how uh, for the last 10 years, man, he's been uh, contemplating divorce. He, he's telling me all of this. And it's quite believable, even though I don't know him like that, and I don't know her, but everything he's saying is, is similar to what I've heard from other men. Uh, that you know she she's uh she's not driven she's not pouring into him she's not supportive uh you know he's the whole nine right so I listen and when he's done uh I said so when did when did this switch go off when did she start switching up on you because I know everybody shows their good face in the beginning and he said by year five year six and uh, I said okay okay. I said, so what changed around that time with you? He said, well, man, I started making some huge money, man, huge, huge money. And uh, I was climbing the corporate ladder. I said, okay. I said, now, when you guys got married and up to year five, year six, man, you were spoiling her, right? He said, yeah. He said, uh, he said yeah, man, she, was, she didn't have to worry about anything. She didn't have to do anything. Uh, I did everything. And, I said, I know this, man. I know this. And, and this would happen, man. I said, she she didn't have an assignment. She didn't have an assignment. She didn't have a duty. She didn't have a, a, a purpose. Or she didn't know her value, what she actually brought to the relationship. I said, but she's sitting back watching you. 
you know, watching you climb the corporate ladder, you know, you fulfilling certain things, but she doesn't know where she is in life. I said, man, she's frustrated, uh, not only with herself, but she's taking it out on you because she feels like you did her disservice, man, by, by spoiling her that much and distracting her, right? By not giving her an assignment, allowing her to know her purpose in this world. He said, man, that's what my brother told me. He said, my brother told me, you know, she's bitter towards me for that. I said, yeah, man. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a child who's spoiled by his community, by his village, by his, his parents. And then he gets outside that home, outside that community, and he's faced with the real world. And he's faced with discipline. He's faced with accountability. He sees that, you know, no one's going to, you know, uh, adhere to his every call. And so now he doesn't know how to handle it. And he looks back on his life. He's reflecting. He's like, man, my parents did me a disservice by not disciplining me, by not setting limits and boundaries. They did me a disservice. And he becomes bitter, right, towards his parents. I said, man, it's the same thing, man. I said, she's probably even dealt with some uh, depression. He goes, yeah, she, she did have a bout of depression. Yeah. I said, how do you think I know this, brother? I said, because everyone needs an assignment in life. Everyone. So I'm telling you, brothers, man, don't fall for this this notion, man, this uh, this rhetoric, this theory, this concept that you should give and give and give and give, and she shouldn't pour into you. It will not work. I'm telling you, man, you can fight against the law of the universe, but you're going to lose. She has to be able to point to you. And like I said, every woman can do that. You have to find or attract the woman that's meant to pour into you. Or you're going to end up bitter, man. So in life, man, it's like this. It's give and take. That's natural order. It's give and take. So, you know, I know a lot of guys hang their hats on that. And, you know, they brag about that. Uh, but I've been there as a young man. And I'm telling you, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. Uh, you got to know who you are. Learn who you are. And that's how you live your life, man. I mean, I got an uncle. Last story. Man, I got an uncle who's a multimillionaire on my mom's side. Actually, he's a second cousin. But he's an older man. He's around 70. And um, multimillionaire. He made his millions through real estate. Building homes. Uh, renovating selling homes, flipping homes. That's how he, he's made his millions. He got a nice crew and uh, he's done well, of course. But there's one thing, he can't read. Yeah, he's illiterate in, in, in the sense of the written word. He cannot read the written word. And so, but this is his thing, you no know, man. He's always kept a woman, a certain type of woman that was able to pour into him where he was weak. Yeah, he's always been attached to a certain type of woman who could be his his eyes, his reading comprehension, and read contracts for him uh, to protect his best interests, to protect his interests, and, and, you know, protect his money, his business. It's a certain type of woman. Every woman is not capable of doing this because every woman is not trustworthy. Every woman is not patient, although most women can read. But every woman doesn't have good intentions. So it takes a certain type of woman for him to draw uh, to him, upon him, that can help him and pour into him where he's weak. He hasn't lost any, any millions. He's actually growing and growing in wealth. Uh, and this is a brother who can't read. But he's attached to a woman or a type of woman that's supposed to pour into him. Brothers, that's what it's all about, man. A lot of you brothers are frustrated, man, because you have to you have to uh, reprogram your mind. There's some bad things. There's some misconceptions. There's some uh, some falsehoods in your subconscious that have been impressed upon your subconscious, and then you later are expressing those hidden thoughts, those deep thoughts, man, and you're attracting what you really don't even want. Those aren't really your true thoughts, man. Someone put those there. Reprogram yourself, brother. Spend time with yourself. Spend some intimate time with yourself. Get to know who you are, who you are not. 
and hey man you'll, you'll bypass all the bs i promise you and as always from me to you love peace if you enjoyed this video and previous videos go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate that's www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate we provide services for the homeless the mentally ill the elderly and the youth